Good morning students. We are learning water resource engineering and hydrology. Today we will start our new chapter that is groundwater hydrology. Before starting in detail, let's discuss about what is groundwater and what is groundwater hydrology. Well, talking about the groundwater, the groundwater may be defined as the underground water that occurs in the saturated zone of variable thickness and depth that all below the earth surface. Well, cracks and pores in the existing rocks uh, or the we can say the unconsolidated crystal layers make up a large underground reservoir from which the surface water get penetrate or we can say get infiltrate into the ground. So groundwater is the part where the precipitation is stored. Now groundwater hydrology so that is the science of occurrence distribution and the movement of water below the surface of the earth. Well the largest available source of the fresh water lies in underground. The total underground water potential is estimated about one third of the capacity of the ocean, which we can say the large volume to store the water. Well, the study of uh, subsurface flow is also important because the about 30% of the world's fresh water exists in the form of the groundwater. Well, the subsurface water forms a critical input for the substance of the life and vegetation. Well, groundwater has been a popular resource of water in many tropical countries. While talking about India, the groundwater is largely tapped for the irrigation purpose. Well, so that about 46% of our total irrigated area gets its irrigation water from this groundwater source. Well, besides the irrigation, groundwater is also used as a source of water supply for the municipality purpose. Also, the groundwater can be utilized through wells and tube wells. Well, uh, the use of such open wells are very high. Well, uh, such a high use just because the groundwater is very easy to extract and it remains well protected from the hazard of the pollutions. However, the situation wherein we have encountered uh, with over exploitation of the groundwater that are very uncommon. So there is, uh, we can say, a low wastage of such water. Okay. Now, lack of del knowledge about uh, the groundwater is, we can say, the primary reason why we have not been able to use the groundwater resource to its full extent. So, let's get the more detailed knowledge about the groundwater resources. So, we'll start with the characteristics of the groundwater. Well, the groundwater is free from the pollution, but it is vulnerable to the pollution entering from the surface sources with the infiltration. While the groundwater is available up to a depth of 3 km below the surface, it requires minimum treatment. Therefore, it is suitable for domestic purpose for small towns. Well, it can be available on the surface at a small capital cost, but it requires repetitive cost of energy for lifting the water to the surface. The groundwater is very limited in the sources, we can say. Hence, the excessive exploitation and contamination has to be managed. The groundwater is free from uh, vegetations, we can say the plant, weeds, turbidity uh, and also the bacterial pollutions. The groundwater exhibit less fluctuation in alternate 
wet and dry season as compared to the surface water so we can say uh, there is a very low possibility of uh, dry season for the ground water also it is uh, uniform in quality uh, in the temperature or the chemical compositions we can say it also maintain the mineral content in it as compared to the surface water so surface water may get polluted but or it may uh, vary the mineral content in it but if we talk about the ground water it maintain its mineral content as well as the quality and the temperature so these are the characteristics of the ground water now let's discuss about the occurrence of a ground water the rainfall that percolates below the ground surface passes through the voids of number of rocks and then it joins the water table now these voids are generally interconnected that permitting the movement of the ground water but in some rocks they may be isolated and thus it preventing the movement of water between the interstices and the mode of occurrence of ground water therefore depends mainly upon the type of formation and depends upon the geology of that particular area so the possibility of occurrence of ground water depends upon two major geological features that is porosity and the permeability well if we talk about the porosity the porosity of a rock which is the major geological criteria for occurrence of the ground water it is quantitative measure of the voids that present in the rocks well if we define the porosity the percentage of the void that present in given volume of soil or we can say the volume of rock which gives the porosity value well here we can see the formula that it is the ratio of volume of voids and the total volume of particular material that may be soil that may be rock well this porosity will always be in the percentage and basically this porosity of uh, soil or any material that depends on the shape packing and the degree of sorting of the component grains uniform and well sorted grains give a rise to the high porosity whereas the heterogeneous grains with the irregular arrangement will decrease the porosity it is also classified uh, well if you will get the porosity more than 20 percentage the material can be said as having the large porosity and same way if it is uh, less than 5% the porosity will be very small for that material the porosity of the rocks and unconsolidated material may vary considerably it may be less than 1% or it can be more than 50% also but in a general way we can say it does not exceed 40% expecting uh, some uh, poor compacted soils such as we can say the clay soil so if we say in the clay soil this porosity percentage is around 45% while uh, in some rocks uh, such as the granite it has a very lowest porosity that is about 1.5% okay so this was all about the porosity now we'll discuss about the next uh, geological feature which affect the occurrence of ground water and that is the permeability well permeability is defined as the porosity of rock or unconsolidated sediment to permit the flow of water through it well ground water can get stored in the underground rocks only if they are sufficiently porous however the porosity does not ensure the storage of underground water in fact the water can enter into the rock if the rock permits the flow of water through it and that is actually known as the permeability so it may be clarified here that a rock 
विच इज पोरस मे और मे नॉट बी परमीएबल फॉर एग्जाम्पल वी कैन से अशेल इज ए पोरस रोक बट इट पोर स्पेसिस आर सो माइन्यूट दैट द रॉक रिमेन्स इन परमीएबल सो इफ वी डिस्कस अबाउट सम फ्यू रॉक्स दैट आर इफ वी टॉक अबाउट द ग्रावेल्स विच इज हाईली परमीएबल as well as the clay is very less permeable and if we talk about the granite rock it is completely impermeable material okay so with this permeability one more uh, geological feature that we should uh, know that is the transmissibility okay now what is transmissibility well it represent the same physical meaning as the permeability but the only difference is that the mathematics well the capacity of the entire soil of full width and the depth will represent the permeability here you just listen carefully that the and capacity of the entire soil with its full width now this full width will convert into unit width that will give you the transmissibility so we can say the capacity of the soil of unit width and the full depth that will give you the transmissibility okay so this two major geological feature which affect the occurrence of ground water now the next topic that is based on a law which is of flow of water through the soil so the topic that is darcy's law well the law of flow of water through the soil was firstly studied by the darcy's and he had made a statement that is for the laminar flow the flow through the saturated soil mass the discharge per unit time is proportional to the hydraulic gradient well and the formula was q is equals to k i a well here we all know that the velocity of the flow that we can say the v is q by a so darcy's law is equals to v is equals to k into i here if we talk about this terminology then q is the discharge per unit time a, a is equals to the total cross sectional area i is equals to hydraulic gradient which is h by l k is the darcy's coefficient of permeability and finally v is the velocity of the flow so if a soil sample of a land l and the cross sectional area a is subjected to the differential head that means the one end is higher than the second end so in such cases the hydraulic gradient will be equal to h by l well this h would be the difference between this two height okay so h1 minus h2 upon l so that would be your hydraulic gradient now if we substitute this i value in the formula of discharge q is equals to kia the discharge would be k into h1 minus h2 by l into a while making this statement darcy's has assumed some data okay so those assumptions for the darcy's law was that the soil that was examined was saturated okay the flow through the soil is laminar uh, also the flow is continuous and the steady only and only in such cases you can apply this darcy's law okay also the total cross sectional area of the soil mass is considered and the temperature at the time of testing is considered as a 27 degree celsius well if we talk about the validity of darcy's law that where you can apply this darcy's law it is valid only for the laminar flow as discussed as an assumption okay and also in the statement uh, he has mentioned that this is valid for only laminar flow also the flow through soil 
that depends upon the dimensions of particles. So in the fine grain soil, the dimension of the voids are very small and the flow is necessarily laminar. And if we talk about uh, the coarse grain soil, the flow is also laminar. However, in a very coarse grained soil, such as the gravel, the flow may be turbulent because of it is having the higher obstruction. Okay, and that may generate the turbulent flow. So, this was the validity of the Darcy's law that it must contain the laminar flow. Also, the flow through the particular soil is also depend upon its dimension. So, if there is a fine grain, the flow would be definitely laminar. But if, if the soil mass contain, uh, contains coarse grained soils, then there may be possibility of the turbulent flow. Okay. So this was all about today's lecture. Thank you so much students for your kind attention. I will see you in the next lecture.